ALS is a devastating disease, and it's always fatal. The initial symptoms are, are very subtle. You may have trouble buttoning your shirt, or grasping a pen to write a letter, or occasionally stumbling while you're walking. Unfortunately, these symptoms progress very rapidly as the neurons that generate, uh, that control movement, die. Eventually, you become paralyzed and unable to speak or swallow or breathe. Most ALS patients die within three to five years, and there is no cure. This is Pete Frades before he developed ALS. And this is Pete Frades shortly before he passed away. Now, receiving the news that you've been diagnosed with ALS would be traumatic to anyone. But Pete was special. When Pete received his diagnosis, he said, I'm going to do something about it. So he gathered his family together, and he said to them, what an amazing opportunity that we have here to change the world. I am going to change the face of this unacceptable situation in ALS. So what did Pete do? Let's take a look. Pete was the man who inspired millions upon millions of people to do the ice bucket challenge. And although he didn't invent the ice bucket challenge, both he and the entire Frady's family were relentless in ensuring its success. <laughs> The concept was simple. Get a bucket of ice water, pour it on your head, and challenge three of your friends to do the same. Then post your video to the internet and hope that it'll generate awareness for the disease and hopefully raise contributions towards ALS research. I'm very glad you enjoyed that video. Uh, I, I literally have watched hundreds of those videos, and I will tell you that by far, Kermit the Frog doing the Ice Bucket Challenge is, is, is my favorite. In 2014, the summer of 2014, the Ice Bucket Challenge went viral and exploded like nothing the world has ever seen. Everyone was doing the Ice Bucket Challenge. Politicians, Rock stars, celebrities, frogs, <laughs> everyone. In fact, I would imagine that several in the audience have done the Ice Bucket Challenge. Raise your hand if, you, if you've done the Ice Bucket Challenge before. Oh, that's amazing. I knew people that come to TED Talks were smart, but I didn't realize how generous they are. The Ice Bucket Challenge had two major goals. The first was to raise public awareness for the disease. Over 440 million people have done the Ice Bucket Challenge. That number alone, I think, says it was indeed a success. Of those, 17 million posted their videos to the internet, and that resulted in over 50 billion views, 50 billion views. That's more than twice the combined number of people that have watched all 53 Super Bowls. I can tell you personally, this increase in public awareness definitely uh, changed my life. Before the Ice Bucket Challenge, when someone asked me what I, what I did for a living, I say, I, I, I do research on ALS. I would usually get a blank look, and I would try again. 
I said, well, ALS is actually a lousy name for the disease. In many countries, they call it motor neuron disease. Motor neurons are actually the type of neurons that die within these patients. Again, still get that same blank look. Then I would say, you know what? I got it. Lou Gehrig's disease. Lou Gehrig, the Hall of Fame New York Yankee, the Iron Horse. He played in over 2,000 consecutive games and unfortunately died of ALS. Now that gave me a response. Usually it was a dirty look, and the person saying to me, John, we're in Boston. We do not discuss the Yankees here. <laughs> Since the Ice Bucket Challenge, I have not met a single person who is not at least aware of ALS. The second goal of the Ice Bucket Challenge was to raise $220 million for research, and that includes $115 million that was donated to the ALS Association, the largest charity for ALS in the United States. This obviously had a dramatic effect on scientific researchers, including myself. In fact, in the months prior to the Ice Bucket Challenge, I applied for a grant from the ALS Association which was based on studying the genetics of this disease. They came back to me and said, John, we love your proposal. We think it's incredible. Unfortunately, we do not have the funds for you to carry out this project. After the Ice Bucket Challenge, the ALS Association called me back and they said, now we have the funds for you to carry out your project. Just two years after receiving that funding, we identified a novel gene called NEC1, which is one of the most commonly mutated genes in ALS. Our gene discovery received a, a large amount of press coverage. To be honest though, as scientists, the press coverage is not what really drive us. What drives us is the discovery itself, the question it answers, and the satisfaction that we are one step closer to identifying care. I will admit though, there were two instances where the press coverage did give me a little bit of a thrill. The first was when I saw that the gene we dis discovered, NEC1, appeared as the basis of a question on Jeopardy. <laughs> so I have to pause for a second. This is freaking cool. All right. I, I, so, so. Now, as many of you are aware, because you are actually attending a TED Talk, it is every geek's dream to be the basis of a question on Jeopardy. <laughs> and yes, I am a self-proclaimed geek. The second event occurred when I was asked to do an interview on PBS, on our gene discovery, with Andrew Frades. Pete Frady's brother. This was the first time that I had met Andrew and we were talking extensively backstage. Then all of a sudden, Andrew stopped. He looked at me, he says, John, there's something I have to tell you. Pete and I and the rest of us were just giddy when we heard your name as the scientist who made this discovery. Obviously, I was a little bit puzzled by this. And I said, well, 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 why? 
And Andrew said, well, you know how every person has a porn star name <laughs> that you can generate by taking your middle name and combining it with the street that you live on? <laughs> so, so yeah. Uh, well, Pete's middle name is John, and we grew up on Lander's Way. <laughs> so, so you, John Landers, <laughs> are Pete Frady's porn star name. <laughs> I, I, I really didn't know how to react to that other, <laughs> other than to say, uh, Thank you, I'm honored. <laughs> so one connection that Pete and I will always have is that I am Pete Frady's porn star name. <laughs> Through the Ice Bucket Challenge, we've been able to uh, continue our research in ALS genetics. But our most recent project is the one that, frankly, I am most excited by. Over the past several years, the genomes of thousands upon thousands upon thousands of ALS patients have been collected. This is an enormous amount of data, and we're not exactly sure how to analyze it. In fact, we estimate that this represents about 70 trillion data points. Just to put this in perspective, if you were to count the human hairs on every single person in the entire world, it would come out to be very close to that number. So how are we going to analyze it? Well, we thought about this for a while, and we said, well, maybe the world can do it for us. So just like the, how the Ice Bucket Challenge crowdsource raising funds for ALS research and increasing awareness, what we intend to do is to crowdsource the world's collective intellect to help us analyze this data. So towards this end, we are collecting all of this data, we're putting it up in the cloud, and our plan is to give it open access to the world population. So what this means is that whether you're a high school teacher, an engineer, a computer programmer, or just someone who likes to solve puzzles, you could be making the next great discovery in ALS genetics. In fact, we even uh, are planning on offering prizes to those who come up with the most innovative ideas to analyze this data. Up to this point, I've discussed how the ALS uh, Ice Bucket Challenge has affected my own research and, and, and me personally. But I'm just one researcher, and the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge goes well, well, well beyond me. It has had an amazing impact on the scientific community. As a result of the Ice Bucket Challenge, the ALS Association has been able to triple their research bu budget, and over the last five years have given out over 300 grants for ALS research. And as, <laughs> and as a result of this, we now have six times as many funded researchers working towards that cure. It's been just five years since the first Ice Bucket Challenge. 
And I literally could stand up here for hours upon hours upon hours talking in excruciating detail on all of the scientific achievements that have occurred over this time frame. Would anyone like me to do that? <laughs> anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? No one. Okay. So have we identified a cure for ALS yet? No, not yet. But are we a whole lot closer now than we would have been without the ice bucket challenge? You bet we are, and we are not done yet. I would just like to end my presentation to say on behalf of all of the ALS patients, their families, and the research scientists who have just benefited from the ice bucket challenge, thank you. <laughs>